Hi, I'm Gary and welcome to my shop. Actually, in this video, I'm going to talk about a metal cutting tool versus a wood cutting tool. Well, that's because some of the crafts that I do are metal crafts and I have to cut up pieces and so forth and weld them together to make some projects. So, what I'm going to talk about is this one I found at Harbor Freight and I also shopped uh, a Ryobi one that operates off of a battery at Home Depot. And that one was $129 at Home Depot. And it didn't even come with a battery. Whereas this one, well, it's corded, so it has to plug in. And it's got a 10 amp motor in it. And it uh, is only $99.99 right now at Harbor Freight until July 8th. Then the price goes back up to, uh, I can't remember what it was. But I think somewhere around the $130 range. This comes um, without a blade, so you got to pick out a blade that you want. There's a couple of different kinds of blades you can pick. And I settled on the 18 TPI, that's best for metal cutting, or based on the metal cutting that I'm doing anyway. And you can also get a 24 TPI, and then there's also a 10 and a 14 TPI too. Now each of these blade sets come with two blades in a box for $15, $16. And you have to buy those in addition to this saw because it doesn't come with the blade. And I figured that the 18 TPI is best for me. 24 TPI seems to be too fine for the metal cutting that I want to do. It's going to take too long to cut. And then the uh, 10 and 14 inch TPI blades. They're very coarse. They've got um, a very coarse blade. And for metal cutting, I think it's just too rough. Those would be better suited for softer materials like wood or plastics, PVC, copper, aluminum, or brass. And you can also cut a lot of those on a table saw or a miter saw that has carbide tip blades. But this can you know, in a pinch, this can make it quicker and easier, perhaps. And also, less wear and tear on your carbide blades on your other woodworking saws. You want to keep them in better condition for making fine woodworking cuts. Now, this comes with a pretty nice box that really handles and protects us very well. And it's even got some blade storage in here where you can put spare blades in and keep them in here. And the instructions say is... Uh, as it says on the box here, keep the teeth down so you don't hurt yourself when you're uh, handling things like this. And this nestles in here very well. It's, like I said, it's 16 pounds. It's called a lightweight, but uh, to me, 16 pounds seems like a lot. If you're going to work with this throughout the day, this is going to get tiring. So uh, it's not something to do hour in and hour out all day long. And the blade was easy to install. You got this release lever here to uh, release the tension, like that. And then apply the tension again once you got the, the blade installed. Um, you can see it just nestles in around these wheels. And it takes a twist when it gets to these guide bearings here. The blade takes a twist. So you can get like a Hold it like this, and you got a straight down cut. So that helps a lot. Now it's got a guide on here. It's kind of like a table or something. It keeps your workpiece, because the blade's going this direction, keeps your workpiece from getting stuck in here or jammed in here with this guide plate. What they give you with this in the instructions is this Allen wrench, which is made, presumably, I think, of a soft metal. And when you try to tighten up these screws here to adjust this plate, because you can go in and out, depending on what kind of work you're doing, this tends to round over, and it's the wrench itself that's rounding over because it's soft. And it's a 1 8 inch Allen wrench. This one is slightly under 1 8 of an inch. That kind of contributes to its ability to round over, besides being soft. So I used a 1 8 inch Allen wrench from um, my Allen wrench set 
and it's a lot stronger, lots uh, harder of a metal. And this doesn't slip at all, so that makes it a lot easier. Now the blade comes in a length of 44 and 7 eighths inches. That's pretty standard size that you can find almost anywhere. Now the motor does have a variable speed here. So you can increase or decrease your speed based on the materials you're cutting and the thickness of it because you don't want to get your blade too hot otherwise it's going to lose its tensile strength and ability to cut efficiently. So this saw is great for making some quick cuts on some metal and saving your woodworking tools and it'll um, save you some on cutting some thicker material depending on the uh, welding arts or crafts that you might be making with welding. Some of that can get to be some thick stuff so you need uh, to have some power to cut through it. So this will be very handy for my metal crafts and I'm looking forward to enjoying this. Okay, what I'm going to do now is show you a few example cuts with this bandsaw and also using these round disc cutting blades on like a handheld roto zip and also on what we call the chop saw. And with the chop saw you can at least cut accurate 45 degree angles and so forth. But you'll see the difference in the sparks and so forth that these throw out. And when they throw sparks, uh, don't have any flammables nearby, so be safe. Okay, a few more tips here is that I wanted to throw in so you know is that this has a 5 inch depth and width of cut and the Ryobi one only had a 2.5 two inch width and depth of cut. So this does a lot more larger material. And the video channel where I found out about this in the first place is called Modern DIY Projects. And I'll put a link to them below. Now he does um, reviews of various tools from Harbor Freight and also he does regular reviews of the sales ads from Harbor Freight. So if you're a Harbor Freight shopper, that's a uh, nifty channel to go and check out. Now for the Allen wrench, I found uh, an Allen wrench. I've got a collection of oddball Allen wrenches and so forth from various different things. I throw them in this one tray and keep them around because you never know when I might need one so I found one that fits the uh, it's a 1 8 that fits the screws there for this throat plate and what I did is I glued um, hot glued a rear earth magnet um, to inside the uh, case uh, that this sits in for storage and that holds the magnet in place there otherwise they don't seem to have anywhere to put the magnet so I put it on that magnet so hopefully I won't lose it. I've located it near the bottom of the case so if it jars loose it's not going to go far and I'll probably get right back onto that magnet right away. That's about it for these tips. Okay well thanks for watching this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something and got some inspiration to maybe do some metal working for yourself. If you enjoyed this and you liked it please give us a thumbs up and hit that button down in the lower right corner there and subscribe and be sure to hit that bell icon so you won't miss anything new also share it with your family friends and other crafts enthusiasts and give us your comments we're interested in hearing what you think what you want to see and what ideas that you may have for us thank you